Hello, this is Mark Cubs with Eras Gone Bullet Molds. Today we're going to talk about how to bundle cartridges, both combustible and standard, uh, as they were during the Civil War. Stick with us. During the Civil War, there were basically two different types of bundling methods for revolver cartridges. And this is true in the, uh, the pre-war years too. There were wrapped cartridges or wrapped bundles where the cartridges were simply bundled together uh, six at a time uh, with percussion caps and wrapped in an outer wrapper and then tied. And this was the standard for almost all the U.S. arsenals uh, before the Civil War. And the cartridges inside are just uh, a, a very simple musket-like cartridge. Uh, the bullet just rolled inside the cartridge. The soldier had to bite the ends off uh, and pour it into the chamber and then load the bullet and so forth. As technology increased and there became more uh, types of combustible cartridges or consumable cartridges, uh, packaging changed uh, to protect those new types of cartridges. And they uh, came in a box, but the box varied. Uh, sometimes it was just a simple pasteboard box uh, sometimes, and that was especially true in the arsenals, uh, and they begin to appear in the mid-war uh, as they went away from the bundles. But the, uh, many of the contractors had patented packaging methods, uh, and they all varied just a little bit. But the, probably the most common type that was used uh, in a block was like this. Just a very lightweight wood, usually poplar, or excuse me, uh, basswood or uh, pine that was drilled out to accept the cartridges and then they were wrapped uh, inside a paper wrapper. As a rule uh, when they were done in a block like this the wrapper also held the, held the uh, label so it's not a separate applied uh, label. There were some exceptions uh, sometimes the label was pasted on the outside either in white paper or brown paper but generally uh, they were put onto the wrapper itself and wrapped around the block. Now I've uh, come up with a way to make those wrappers. This is essentially just some very thin masking paper that I bought at uh, Home Depot. And it's the same paper I used to make cartridges for the non-combustible style cartridges. And I came up with a label. This is just uh, a <laughs> using modern fonts uh, matching as possible uh, the font on a period label and two to a sheet. I cut the masking paper the same size as printer paper and then ran this through my printer uh, and uh, it's a, sort of an aggravating process. Uh, about one in three of these would get jammed. Uh, so if you have a, maybe a better quality paper, a better quality printer, uh, that may not be an issue. But I just have a little tabletop printer. But uh, it works. Uh, if you use a thicker paper, it works even better. This is a heavier masking paper. But I think that most of the original wrappers were rather thin. A thin, uh, thin weight paper like this. The U.S. Ordnance Manual gives instructions on how to bundle cartridges. Uh, it generally geared toward musket cartridges, which has 10 per pack. Uh, but it uh, also works for revolver cartridges and I assume they did the same thing and what it basically says is to uh, take a take wood and build an open topped box that also has open ends and the width of that box should match the length of the cartridges and the height should be the same as the diameter of the bullet. Now I came up with a small box uh, it's, it's not exactly the specifications because the edges are taller uh, than the width of the box, but it still works. And this one essentially is a strip of pine that's a one and three quarters inches wide. And then on either side, I've nailed a strip of one by two. And so uh, it works very well. And to uh, bundle cartridges, you take a wrapper. In this case, I have a wrapper with a, a label already on it. You center it over the slot and uh, do your best to keep the label centered 
if you're not completely successful, it's not a big deal because uh, they were very often off kilter during the period too. And it just sort of a happy coincidence that uh, the wooden blocks I use happen to fit inside here also. And they're, they're great for sort of creasing the paper for me. And I assume you could make uh, something similar if you wanted to do this type of bundle. And at that point, uh, and I forgot one step, I have to put my twine underneath the paper. So I'll put that back in there with the twine underneath it. So I'll have to tie the bundle when this is all over. And then you arrange the cartridges inside, alternating the tails, at the same time trying to uh, keep the tails down or against another cartridge, keep them from uh, flying about And just as an aside, you probably heard me mention this before, that almost all of this kind of work in the U.S. arsenals and also the contractors was done by children and women. Uh, they were very proficient at it. Uh, the women especially were very detailed, detailed oriented and uh, did a great job in producing cartridges. And the children too. Uh, <laughs> Uh, child labor laws were a little different back in those days. But anyway, we put uh, six cartridges in and then a cartridge tube that has eight percussion caps. And that goes into the bundle also. And uh, either on the top or on the edge, in this case I'll put it right here on the end. And then the paper was folded over Increased and glued or pasted, I should say. And I'm going to use a modern glue stick. It's also a starch based glue, just as they would have at the time. It's just very convenient and easy to use. And we'll paste that down. The ends uh, were folded over, and typically they were not all that pretty in the way they did it. And I'll also put a little glue to help hold those as we uh, tie them off. And as you fold, fold the ends in, uh, just make sure that uh, the cartridges are all pressed up together. And uh, I think by watching this, you may also get an idea of why I'm not often asked to wrap Christmas presents in my household. So, paste it down. And then the back is tied. It's one half hitch. And then uh, take it out of the box, flip it over. And uh, as you can see, I'm having a little trouble, <laughs> but you get the picture. I may have to throw it back in here and, and uh, start all over with the tying part of it. It's hard to do this and, and, uh, and keep it in frame at the same time. So forgive me on that. Theoretically, the knot should be on the back. So you pass it around. Bring it through uh, just to, for brevity's sake. In this case, the knot is going to be on the front. And then trim off the excess. And there you have uh, bundled cartridges. As you can see, my, late, my uh, printing is slightly off, but uh, that's not very unusual at all. The wooden block that I chose to reproduce is one of the most common of the war. It was made by the Sage Cartridge Company, who produced both 44 and 36 caliber combustible cartridges for the U.S. government. It was a simple pine block with six holes drilled into the end grain. 
This drawing of the blocks and the cartridges of Sage 44 ammunition was prepared after the war. The holes are not a common drill size, and the drill bit was probably made specifically to fit the ammunition. A customer of mine, whose name I'm ashamed to admit I can't remember, prepared the modern drawing of the block with the measurement suggested to use a common one-half inch Forstner bit. The cartridges in the drawing use the Aris Gone Johnson and Dow bullet. Now I must mention here that original Johnson and Dow cartridges did not use a block. They were simply bundled in brown paper. Sir, if you're watching this, thank you for the drawing. and Please leave a message in the comments and take credit for the schematics. I'll place a link in the video description for these drawings and the labels that you see in this video and you can download them for your own use. To make the blocks, I started with 3 quarter inch pine. I ran it through a planer down to .650 as the drawing suggests and then used a bandsaw to cut the block to the proper size. I then used a drill press with an XY vise to hold the block while I drilled the holes. After lining the block in the vise and centering it, all I had to do was advance the vise jaws to drill each hole. I don't think I could have done this nearly as precisely without this XY drill press vise. Here's a picture of some of the completed blocks I made. It, it took me about uh, 35 minutes to do all of these. As I mentioned before, besides the bundles that came from the arsenals, there were also blocks that were used. Uh, some were cardboard and pasteboard, especially those from the arsenals in the later part of the war. But most of the contractors had a, a patent type of block or a packaging material that they that they like to use and generally they're very similar uh, the patents didn't really vary that much Colt may have been the uh, the exception uh, when they when they cut their box uh, the holes were bullet shaped and then the block itself was split and you could it would pull open like a clamshell uh, it's a lot easier to get to the cartridges that way you could also make them a lot tighter and there was less movement around inside the block. Uh, but this tend to be uh, what most of the uh, contractors use for combustible cartridges. And uh, the hole in these that I've had to reproduce are, are half inch because I don't have the, the correct size uh, drill bit, Forstner drill bit, which would be about 475. So as a result, the block is also scaled up just a little bit to account for the larger holes. And these are just a, a straight hole with a flat bottom. And as you can see, all the cartridges fit inside. Uh, they move around a little bit, but they still are very well protected inside a block like this. And I'll post uh, some schematics for this block. Uh, and also some pictures of original, uh, dr uh, drawings of original boxes that came out of uh, Dean Thomas's round ball to rimfire. Now to wrap these things, uh, they also had a string, although it was used for a different purpose, and that's the string actually was protected by patent uh, from Colt, but it seems that most folks ignored that patent, and I can't find any information to show that uh, that was contested by Colt. In fact, I found did find correspondence that um, one of the arsenals was using it, and uh, um, they were basically told to go forth. No one had contested, and uh, so you know, not to worry about. It. Even though one of the officers brought up the fact that it was patent protected, they went ahead and continued to use it. And evidently, Colt did not contest them in court for that that purpose. I guess they wanted to keep their contracts. Huh? But uh, at any rate, pull string goes around. And I'll post uh, put that in place with a little paste. And then next I will center the block over the imprint for the label. And I'll retrieve my glue stick here. Then the paper is 
just simply wrapped around and pasted in place. And then the ends are trimmed. Just want, don't want to stand up. And I suppose you could actually cut your papers ahead of time uh, so there'd be less trimming during this process, but uh, you have to really make sure that the label is centered correctly if you do it that way. You see, uh, for me, it's easier just to trim them after the fact. And it really is just like wrapping a small package. Now on this end, when you trim, you have to be a lot more careful that you don't cut your cord, your pull cord. And that's really all there is to it. As I said before, uh, you could print the labels separately and apply them. There were a few that were done that way. Most had the, uh, the label right on the brown paper. And of course, after these were wrapped, uh, many of them were also shellacked uh, to help give them some waterproof uh, properties, uh, especially if the uh, cartridges themselves were, were billed as waterproof. Uh, they would put something on the paper on the outside, uh, sometimes wax, more often a shellac or varnish. And then to open it, the soldier just really just pulled that cord. It would unzip it all the way around and he'd have access to the uh, cartridges on the inside. The majority of these uh, did not have caps included with them as the bundle cartridges did. There were, there were some that did and they'll typically say with percussion caps and they would either have a separate hole uh, for the tuba caps or they'd be just a little bit longer and have a groove cut in the end of the block where that tube could fit into and, and make it still flat when it was wrapped. Well, thanks for watching. Sorry for the length of this video. It's about twice as long as I expected. But go to the uh, description of the video above and you'll see links to where you can get the drawings and the labels. And please visit our website and see the latest we have to offer.